and PF dairy proteins are here now. You, you can eat, I mean, I, I already eat um, chocolate and so on with precision fermentation proteins. The chemistry is exactly the same. It's just two different ways to produce it. There are molecules called sweet proteins that are on a weight basis a thousand times sweeter than cane sugar. A thousand times. So one kilo of sweet protein essentially substitutes for one ton of sugar. Boom, right? I, I mean, it's over for corn sugar, cane sugar, and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, if I'm right, fermentation farms, precision fermentation farms are essentially the new food farms. Every time I think I've discovered every cool new thing there is to discover in food tech, I find a whole new company doing something super cool. So I've been a Tony Siba fan for quite a while, and he recently, a couple weeks ago, did another one of his talks in Saudi Arabia. If you've seen his talks before, it's quite similar to what he's been saying for years, if not decades. But in terms of food, it's interesting because he has changed some of the content. Now, one of the things that I was really intrigued by in Tony Siba's latest presentation is where he mentioned precision fermentation chocolate, which I've never tried before. And also he was starting to talk about sweet proteins. What are sweet proteins? I feel like I've tried all as, at least as many as I can. I haven't tried chunk foods, precision fermentation steak, but I've tried as many precision fermentation products as I can get my hands on and I've not yet found chocolate. So I started looking on X and I found that he mentioned this company, Oobly. Oobly makes iced tea and chocolate using sweet proteins. Now, what are sweet proteins? So instead of eating sugar or now more commonly what the industry is unfortunately doing is they're saying, oh, we don't put sugar in our products. But then you look at the label and you see, oh, actually there's stevia, monk fruit or some other kind of sweetener. So if you're diabetic, you're still going to get massive sugar spikes and you're still ultimately eating sugar. Personally, I wish that companies would just make versions of their products without sugar, but alas, here we are. I have a bit of personal beef with sugar. I think food companies use way too much of it. So I was really intrigued by sweet proteins because instead of all these sugars or these fake sugars, aspartames, the stevias, the artificial sweeteners, whatever else people put in their products that is not sugar. This is a actual protein. So it's not a carbohydrate. It doesn't digest like a carbohydrate. It is not a sugar. And so your body doesn't treat it like a sugar. It treats it like a protein and digests it like a protein. And so all it is, is it's activating certain molecules on your tongue to make you think you're tasting something sweet, but your body treats it like protein. So if all of this adds up, then that means in theory, if someone uses this in their product, diabetics, for example, would be able to eat this product without getting massive sugar spikes, without messing up their insulin. This could actually solve a lot of problems. As of me recording this, Oobly will actually send you a free six pack of tea. All you have to do is go into their website and watch this video we're about to watch. They will send you a free six pack of tea. So naturally, I got my tea coming and I've also ordered some chocolates from them. So I'm really curious about how this actually works. And for good measure, I'm looking to also buy a glucose monitor because I want to try some normal chocolate. And then I'm going to try some Oobly chocolate and we're going to do a little experiment just to make sure that this actually works as advertised. Cool video coming up on that. Did someone say sugar disruption? Boom. It's over for corn sugar, cane sugar, and so on and so forth. Tony did. Sweet proteins are what I would call a game-changing technology in sweetness. 
We've been working on this problem forever. We've loved sweetness forever, but we've never had access to sweet proteins in a way that we can rebuild our food and beverage products around until Oobly. So it's basic biology for us to love sweets. We just weren't designed for the reckless abundance of sugar we currently have in our diets. Almost 40% of the U.S. population is either diabetic or pre-diabetic, and this comes from how much sugar we eat in our diet. The recommended daily allowance for sugar is around 30 grams per day, and Americans on average eat between 70 and 100 grams. That's two to three times more leading to diabetes as well as other adverse health conditions. We want everyone to enjoy that sweetness, but in a much healthier way. We have a groundbreaking alternative, which is sweet proteins. The sweet proteins are just that. They're proteins that taste sweet, and they're very different from sugar, which is a carbohydrate. And carbohydrates and, and other what we call small molecules, things like aspartame, uh, sucralose, these are all very tiny molecules relative to proteins. And so what happens when you eat too much sugar is it bombards the taste receptors in your mouth, as well as all of those same taste receptors in your gut, telling your body to make insulin. And when your body makes too much insulin, it loses its ability to make insulin, and that's type two diabetes. So that's part one. Part two is you're a walking, talking fermenter, just like these guys. You have a microbiome, and when it gets that sugar, it has an imbalance and growth, and so you can get tolerability issues. Um, the same is true with small molecule sweeteners like aspartame and sucralose that were designed by chemists to look a lot like sugar. And so you get that same sweetness response, but without the calories. The problem is they're still small molecules and they are still able to pass through your soft tissues, trigger insulin response, but also affect your gut microbiome. So sweet proteins are different because they're made up of chains of amino acids. And these chains of amino acids have primary, secondary, and tertiary structures, meaning they fold up. And that folding, that three-dimensional structure gives them the function, in this case, a function of sweetness when they touch those same T1R2 and T1R3 taste receptors. And so when we eat them, they unfold and they lose that structure as we break them down into their constituent peptides and amino acids. And then we reuse those to make more proteins for our body. But the cool thing about that is they don't touch those taste receptors in our gut. They just digest normally like proteins and don't affect your blood insulin level, your blood glucose level, or your gut microbiome. We need far less of them than we need of sugar to sweeten our product. Take sodas, which uh, on average have some 72 grams of sugar, which looks a lot like these 18 sugar cubes. That's a lot of sugar just to sweeten your soda. And so for us, we can take some tens of milligrams of our oobly fruit sweet protein to give the same amount of sweetness that you see in these 18 sugar cubes. And that is exactly how we sweeten our sweet iced teas. But the cool thing is, is they work with any other protein too. So this is not the protein that you want to rely on for most of the protein in your diet, but it is the protein that you want your sweetness from. We've known about sweet proteins for a long time. Culturally, we've learned about these from the different peoples that have grown up around these sweet berries and fruits. Sweet proteins co-evolved with us to trick us into thinking they tasted like sugar, but they've been limited to the places that they naturally grow, mostly tropical regions around the equator. And uh, they're spectacularly hard to get to. Most of them grow up in the canopy of, of rainforests and are very difficult to, to farm at large scale. So rather than do that, we've harnessed precision fermentation, which is a lot like brewing beer or making wine uh, to produce these in large tanks, which can go anywhere on the planet. And this is a solution not just that doesn't threaten our planet from a sustainability perspective, it also enables us to produce these proteins at a scale and at a cost that's meaningful to get them in products uh, that everyone in the world can have access to. Oobly is the first company to commercialize these proteins and bring them in products that people can buy. For Oobly, that starts with the Oobly fruit, sweet protein, which scientists refer to as braising. It has a sweetness that's very much like sugar and, and one that's been enjoyed in West Africa for thousands of years. And the miracle berry, uh, which makes miraculin, they call it the miracle berry because it has the ability to do many miraculous things.
Each one of these uh, plants is unique in, in how it produces uh, sweet proteins and which sweet proteins. There are several species that do in fact make sweet proteins. And that's great for us uh, as they present different proteins or different tools to do different jobs as sugar is in many forms across our food and beverages. Precision fermentation is a climate positive process. For every 1% of sugar reduction we get the world over, that's 650,000 acres of sugarcane we didn't have to plant or grow. That's 650,000 acres that we can either plant uh, more nutritious crops to feed the world or regrow our rainforest so that our planet can breathe again. So at Ubli, we've completed safety studies uh, on our proteins to the highest recommended standards uh, in collaboration with the FDA. But again, these are proteins. They are sweet proteins, but they are in fact proteins. And so we already know a lot about proteins and how the body digests them. And these are no different. I'm excited about the revolution that is sweet proteins, this game-changing technology in sweet proteins that can change the way you experience sweetness in a wonderful way, in a way that's great for your mouth and your taste buds, but also wonderful for your body. I'm excited for you to get out and try our products. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.